And by the grace of God, we witness many more in Jesus' name. Today, I have the rare privilege to introduce our Father in the Lord, whom God has prepared to bless us with the word. He said, this is his superintendent, Abu Legba. Gentlemen and ladies, please join me to welcome Pastor Gabriel Olu Akeju to the podium. You're welcome, Daddy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm happy to be part of what the Lord is doing here. Um, it's been a while. I had the privilege of being here to minister, I think, for a week in 2015, if I could remember very well. That was when Pastor Ajanoku was here. And um, thank God for what I am seeing here today. The progress that um, has taken place here over these years. And I want to say glory be to God in the highest. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, a glorious God, we thank you because of your wonderful doings in this church. Thank you for the members. Thank you for the ministers. Thank you for everything that you have done, that you are doing, and that you will still do. Lord, be glorified in the name of Jesus. At this moment, we are gathered in your presence. I want to hear from you. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Uh, once again, I am happy to be in your midst. Thank God for the man of God. The pastor and the zona superintendent here, uh, who had been a friend and a brother for a very long time. Uh, likewise, all other ministers, I say, God bless you all. I'm more anointing in Jesus' name. Yeah, the topic is spiritual living. Demonstrating the Holy Spirit's power and principles. And um, we're reading from Galatians chapter 5. Let me just take verse 25. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Well, the, um, the book, this epistle to the Galatians was, uh, as we all know, is uh, by Paul the Apostle. And I was trying to address some issues which I will mention briefly later. But because of this topic, living in the spirit, or life in the spirit, you know, demonstrating the power and principles of the Holy Spirit, the power and principles. And when you look at it, the church today, and among Christians generally, we celebrate gifts, we talk more about spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts. And at times when we see some people, we say this one is not gifted. We, we categorize ministers. We say this one is not gifted. This one is not as gifted as this one. But I don't know how we measure uh, probably what is our measuring uh, yardstick. Because we just believe that certain gifts are better than the others. And then we celebrate some people or members of the body 
that are operating in a particular gift, we celebrate them than the others. And I always want people to understand uh, the fact that gift is God using you while fruit of the Spirit is God dwelling in you. Fruit is God dwelling in you while gift is God using you. Some people may be used and dumped. Whereas, there is no way by which God will dwell in you and will still dump you. But one can be used and be dumped after being used. There is um, a common saying for some people in the past. I think people are correcting it now, but some people are still saying it. And they want to introduce some ministers of God. In Yoruba, they will say, I want Baba Wati Olorun Lobi Oko Ati Ada. Ignorantly, they thought what you use, I mean, you use cutlass and the uh, hoe so much in the farm. But they have forgotten that after using hoe and cutlass in the farm, you dump them somewhere after the harvesting and everything. They don't eat part of the produce. So that is use and dump. May that never be our portion in Jesus' name. So it is possible. For somebody to be used and to be dumped at the end of the day. So, uh, we're talking about demonstrating the power and the principles of the Holy Spirit. When we talk of life in the Spirit or living in the Holy Spirit. It is therefore the focus of my message here today. To emphasize the importance of working continuously in the spirit. As our conduct, our character is controlled by the Holy Spirit. So one can be faking some gifts. When he is not having the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That is um, showcasing through the exhibition of the fruit of the spirit. Hey, let me talk, let me just take two points within uh, the shortest, I mean, short uh, time that I have here. Now let's talk about the principles of living in the spirit. The principle of living in the spirit. When we talk of living in the spirit, there are principles. Now let me look at it this way. There are three things that happen to us through the Holy Spirit. Three things happen to us through the Holy Spirit. Number one, we are born of the Spirit. We are born of what? I can't hear you. We are born of the Spirit. So that is why some people will say, you don't need the baptism of the Holy Spirit once you give your life to Jesus Christ. Because... There is no way by which you will say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit in you. And that is why some people believe that once you are born again, the Holy Spirit is already in you. Yes, to some extent, when we give our love to Jesus Christ, it is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit prepares the preacher. The Holy Spirit prepares the receiver of the message. And when the two connect together, Salvation will be the result. And that is why we say, okay, the Holy Spirit is involved when we are to give our life to Jesus Christ. So we are born again through the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we see in John 3, uh, verse 5. That it's necessary for entering into the kingdom. Entering into the kingdom is through being born of the Spirit. It is a spiritual birth. The new birth, that is becoming a child of God, is through the work of the Holy Spirit. And not only that, it is when we repent of our sins. You repent of your sins when the Holy Spirit has made you to understand that you are walking in sin. When you have not been convinced and convicted that you are in sin, you will not see anything wrong. With your sinful life. One will still be preaching. It may, um, recently somebody was talking about his past life. 
when he was uh, in the world, he said he was a preacher, a pastor, putting on collar. He will put on collar and we still go to the beer parlor and drink beer and still come back to church and conduct a revival, so called revival, and the whole atmosphere will change and everything will happen. Well, one can fake anything. But there is something that cannot be faked. We can't, we'll get there. So, but it is possible not to be born again and be doing like somebody that is born again. Can be so sanctimonious, so, you know, fake holiness, that when we get to the church, you say, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Oh, sister Joke, you are blessed. He reigns. Hallelujah. You know, these are the Christian languages that we fake. When we claim to be born again, and we are not yet born of the Spirit. Now, not only that, we are to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, or be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That is the second thing that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit does in our lives. Apart from being born of the Spirit, we are also to be baptized in the spirit. And this occurs once. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is an experience that all Christians who must walk in the spirit must experience. And then it was an experience uh, that occurred, that happened uh, to the apostles, the, the early church. They experienced this. On the day of Pentecost, they had the experience of being baptized, being immersed in the Spirit. After waiting for 10 days at the upper room, so the Holy Spirit visited them and they started speaking in tongues as the Holy, Holy Spirit gave them the utterance. That was the endowment of power from above. So, Power here is through the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, you shall receive power when what happened? Huh? After what? The Holy Spirit has uh, come upon you. So you will receive power. So the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the endowment of power from heaven. So we receive the power to live our lives for Christ. We receive the power to live as Christians. Well, so we, live, we, we receive power to work for God. You, so that we become empowered. We, we get ability. We get um, uh, uh, all it, I mean, uh, we needed to serve God. All that, is, that are needed to be his witnesses. So you will receive power. And after you receive power, you will be my witnesses. So, this one is needed. We need this power. And because of the reception of this power, we begin to flow. We begin to uh, be useful. We are useful in his kingdom. We become uh, vessels in his hand. We become useful. So, whoever has not experienced the first birth may not be able to experience this second experience. But unfortunately, today, we have, uh, you won't be surprised to see somebody who is still outside there, who is still walking with the devil. We just come to church one day, we say, God is calling me. Calling you to do what? Yes, it's not, it's not wrong. God may be calling you, but calling you to salvation is number one thing. So, it's calling you to salvation after the Holy Spirit has done the work of conversion in you, becoming a child of God. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Then the next thing is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it is the promise of the Father in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 4. The, pro the Father promised this endowment of power from above, like I said, is a definite experience that you know when it happened. And then, there are things that follow. Like the evidence of uh, speaking in tongues, 
and the rest of them. But you have it. You know it that you have the Holy Spirit. And it begins to work in you, pushing you to do what you were unable to do, what you've not been able to do in the past. You just see the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helping you to do those things. Like somebody who has been shy, cannot stand before two, three, four people. You see him now standing before congregation and, and speaking. Either singing, preaching, or even going for evangelism outside all alone. No, these are things that ordinarily you can't do before. So you see, you yourself doing those things, it means there is a power somewhere that is working it in your life. And it does not end there. It doesn't stop there. So the third thing, and that is where a lot of people are missing it today. When you are born of the Spirit, and then you are, you are baptized in the Spirit, and you, you are not filled with the Spirit, there's still problem. What is the first thing? You are born of the Spirit. Second one? Baptized. And then the third one, you are to be filled continuously. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19 says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. So, when the Holy Spirit fills you, apart from being baptized, then you will now continue to be refilled every day. Being filled here is a command, an imperative. Be filled. It says, be filled. It means, it's something that we are to go after. You are to, you know, continue to, you know, do it. Begin, continue to experience it as a Christian every time. It is a must. It is a must. Not optional. Being filled in the, with the Holy Spirit is not optional. It's not what? It's not what? It's not optional. It is a must. If we must continue to serve, if we must continue to experience him, if we must continue to serve him better in all areas where he has, you know, placed us to serve him. Don't forget, you are not born again to sit down on the pew. You are born again to be useful. You are saved to serve. And when you are saved to serve, there must be something propelling you, something moving you, something motivating you, something you know, pushing you. And that is when you continue to be filled. Continue to be filled. You are filled and you are refilled. Just like you do to your phones. Abby, is there anybody who's um, uh, car uh, credit um, you loaded 2,000 of 1,500 and now it's becoming 200 naira. What will immediately be coming to your mind? Huh? What will be coming to your mind? Recharge. How do I recharge? How will I recharge? Do I have enough money in my account to recharge? Do I, do I buy from uh, the vendors around? Say, so you will you be thinking of how to recharge so that it will not in fact before you know it your your uh, what do we call it, the network provider will be uh, telling you that your uh, your credit is uh, low it's official you know before talking about insufficient we're talking telling you that it's low it's already becoming low they'll be warning you even if it is data they will tell you your data will soon uh, expire. And so on. Meaning that you need to recharge. In that same way, we need it. 
spiritually. But we think of refueling our car. You bought your car, tam tam, tam nylon. And uh, you fill your car. I mean, they fill it while you are bringing, where they, are, they were bringing it to you. Fill up. So, does that mean you will not buy fuel again? If your car is moving from, maybe they are bringing the car from uh, Victoria Land or from where? Uh, or from Tinkana Land or wherever. They are bringing it to you in the bottom. The full the fuel tank will have become low before it gets to you. Before you bring it back to Lagos or you are traveling to Akure or wherever, you have to do what? You have to refill. Now everybody is thinking of how to refill our, uh, refill our car now. That is why we go queuing at the filling stations for fear of uh, not having enough fuel to go to our working place during the, in the, the coming week. So, you see, it started happening for some days now. People queue. It's not as if they don't have fuel in their car already, but they are thinking of refueling. And that is the same way we do to our spiritual life. We need to do to our spiritual life. And that is why we need to be filled. And that is what we do. That's what we do every day when we come to church and we are asking for the Holy Spirit. We are not asking for the baptism again, but we are asking for the infilling so that we continue to be filled. A lot of things made this to be uh, important. There are a lot of things. We have routines of life that can drain us of our spiritual energy. You know, the routines of life. Things that we go through in life. The stress of life. So if we go in uh, with this stress, our, 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 our spiritual uh, life will be coming down. And then we need something that will jack us up again. And that is the Holy Spirit. So, in feeling, we do that in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, we also have the attacks of the enemies around us. You know, those things can, can deplete us. Like, um, you see, Jesus himself was tempted. You still remember? Jesus was tempted. If Jesus was tempted, you can't be exempted. You can't be exempted. So, something will come tempting you. But with the Holy Spirit in you, you, know, you, you already know, I mean, something is already in you that will knock off whatever the enemy is bringing. And many other things like that. But, now, apart from these things that I call the principles that necessitate uh, our spiritual progress. You know, our progress in the Holy Spirit. Being filled, I mean, uh, being born again, being baptized, and being filled. Then we now have the practice of living in the Spirit. How would this be possible? Living in the Spirit. Does it mean being on the prayer mountain always living in the spirit does it does that mean staying in the church and being on the altar 24 7 being in the spirit living in the spirit does it mean living in the mission house does it mean going to arakeji and be staying there for months or for years no you can be at ikeji arakeji and be bathing yourself at odu arena seven times a day and yet, you are still not in the spirit. Hallelujah. Now, that is why in the book, I mean this epistle to the Galatians, I mean, talk a bit about the background. Paul preached to them, started the church, and after a while, after his departure, you see, people started teaching them another thing, contrary to what Paul taught them. So, he gave them 
the gospel of grace that you are saved by grace. And now some people now came around and they started teaching the church at Galatia that you need some legalistic things to remain in Christ. So you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to, you know, some ceremonial washings, some, some ceremonial practices and the rest of them. So, you know, being, making them to become legalistic in their styles of life. And now, Paul now came to write them that, no, 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 no. I have not preached such a gospel to you. If anybody is bringing that such a gospel, no, 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 it's not part of it. But, this is what it means to be in the spirit. Now, in, in the whole of chapter 5, he was talking about freedom in Christ. We have freedom in Christ, but that does not mean that our freedom, our, our, our freedom should be taken for granted and be used for licentiousness. You know? Because we are at liberty. We are free. No, 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 no. That does not mean we have to live our life Anyhow, but he's now saying that we have to live our life in the spirit. And what does it mean to live in the spirit? Live in the freedom of Christ. I was telling some people recently uh, in a teaching program, they talk about redemption. The word redemption is a slave market language. When you buy a slave and then you bring the slave to you. But in the case of Jesus, what he did that is called redemption, where the word, the, that, that slave market word was used in relation to our own redemption, is that Jesus saw us as slaves in the slave market of Satan. He got there, he purchased us, he bought us with his own blood, and then after buying us, he now told us, you are now free. You are set free. And I said, there are two options. Praise the Lord. How many options? Two options. Either for me, that, I, uh, that is declared Freedom, I mean free, to now jump up and jump out. I am free and begin to run towards uh, police college. And before I get to the gates, I will be rearrested. You know the mark of slavery is already there anyway. They know they know a slave. Only they don't know who the owner is. But they know this is Odana Kato Sarehu. Ah, absconded slave, really. Then you will be recaptured by somebody. Again. So, but the another option is to tell the one that bought me and set me free and say, Oga, I know you, has, you have de declared me free, but I will remain your free servant from today. I want to stay with you. So, stay with him is the freedom that we have. We have that freedom, but that freedom should not be abused. So today, we see a lot of preachers that are preaching freedom, 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 freedom. You know, it's not a license to licentiousness, like, I, like I've said. It's not a license for you to do whatever you like. Like uh, some people are saying today, no, 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 you, you, you are free. Yes, but you are not free. Is that not contradictory? Huh? You are free, but you are not free. You are free as a child. You are free as a son, as a daughter in your father's house. But at the same time, you are not free to just behave anyhow. Otherwise, your father will still discipline you heavily. So, the practice of living in the spirit. It's when you now see yourself as belonging to Christ. Yes, 
enjoying the grace of your father, but at the same time, you don't want to turn grace to disgrace. You don't want to abuse that grace. You want to remain in him. You want to allow his spirit to continue to guide you. Don't forget, you have been born of the spirit. You have been baptized by the spirit. And then you are continuously being filled with the Holy Spirit. And now, that in you, we now begin to help you. We continue to help you to remain where your father wants you to be. It's not, it is not me now giving you legalistic uh, policies. You must not do this. You must not do that. You must not. This is all you should do. If the Holy Spirit in you will be the one tell it. Like I, 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 I've been saying it. I tell people. Uh, I was somewhere and they told me I should write at the door and I should tell the ushers that uh, this is what they should wear when they are coming to church. They should uh, remove their this and that. I said, oh, yeah. I will be the biggest fool if I ask my ushers to do that. I will be legalistic. If I ask somebody not to do it as he enters the church and he gets out of the church, he will, when he's coming to the church, he puts those things in his, uh, in his bus and uh, when he gets to the gates after service, he puts them on again. What good is in that? You know, I've only ended up make, I mean, being legalistic. And then I'm only building hypocritical Christians. Christians who will be hypocritical in their lifestyle, who will live their fake, I mean, they will live their life fake in a, in a fake manner. You know, a lot of fake Christians are there all over. They, 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 they come to church, they are so sanctimonious, they are, they are so, you know, like I said the other time, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, it rains. Let somebody praise the Lord. Sister Titi, how are you? Sister Joke, oh, God is good. The same sister, when he gets out, I begin to change your friend. This is the same sister that was doing like a... Huh? I mean, no, because of the way we built them, because of the way we produce them, we make them to be fake. And they are living fake life. I, I, I told the church. You know, you know, I, 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 I they, they said, when they are coming, like when Pastor Labeda was there, was here, when they are doing wedding like that, we stay, we are stationed the ushers at the door. That the, This type of dress, this, the wedding is interdenominational service. Anybody can come in. Who knows if it is the message of that day that will change the person. If I now ask that person never to come to church, what good have I done to that person? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But that does not mean one should continue to live a lifestyle that you know is not glorifying God. The fact that you are not being legalistic does not say certain things should not be dropped. Am I, am I talking? So, by the time the Holy Spirit is done with you in a particular area, you voluntarily drop that thing. And it will be said concerning you and that thing that it is not my pastor that coerced me. It is not my whatever that coerced me. The Holy Spirit told me the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I heard it. But if it is your pastor that commanded you not to do it, you only end up saying, we don't do it in our church. And that is what a lot of people are doing. They will be, uh, why are you not bringing beer to your naming uh, ceremony? We don't do it in our church. But when the church people is gone, when all the church people are gone, Ah, drink yourself to hell. The practice of the life or living in the spirit begins 
from being born of the Spirit, being baptized in the Spirit, being continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. And then it will now be easy for you to now, from the principle to the practice. You now practice living in the Spirit. It will be easy for you because nobody is forcing you into it. Some people, sir, when they were in the church, they were forced not to do certain things. And then they were still under that when they were led to the seminary. They were led to the seminary and they go to the seminary and the seminary is saying, wait, no, no, you must not do this here. You must not do this here. Oh, he, he graduated with that mind. And with that mindset, he is doing the work of the ministry. Ungangangang um, has not been born again thoroughly. Some are half-baked. Some are unbaked. Again, what's happening? The unbaked are even better than the half-baked. Because the unbaked, I tell you, my has not been baked. But they have baked. Oh, Lua, they, they, they do the highest uh, damage to the work of God than the unbaked. Well, let me tell you, we have been in the church for so, so number of years. We have served under so, so, we have done this, we have been this, we have been that. They will tell you stories that you have never even experienced in your life. Yet, Everything is fake. Now, Paul was talking about being crucified. That is the practice of living in the spirit. You are already living a crucified life. Paul said, I think in chapter 2 of that uh, uh, passage, uh, um, what do you call it? Galatians verse 20. He says, are you there? I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by what? The faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the life I am living is no longer my life. I am living the life of Christ. I have been crucified with him on the cross. So when we get to that level, we are living in the spirit. Let sin come. Let temptation come. Let anybody come and lure you into anything. It is not you again that is living. But who is living in you? Christ. So you are living by the spirit. It becomes difficult for you to do the thing that the Holy Spirit will not do. There was a story of a man when uh, Fellas Shrine was still at um, Ojoe Legba. You know, when you are crossing from Jibo to the other side, that's the real crossing, by the left like this, you see all these Ashawo ladies. You see them there. Now, so you, I just, the, the, the man was just going and the Ashawa were inviting. Today, here now, you know how they used to do if you have been yeah, gone through that place before. Around 7 p.m. or so. And then, the man said, Hey, you are talking to a dead man. So you are talking to a dead man. When the, the ladies heard that, he said, You are talking to a dead man. Me, as you see me, I'll be dead man. I'll be dead man. Dead man. He, the, the lady laughed. You know, I don't see that body. Oh, help me. I don't see that body. Oh, I don't see that body. Oh. They, they all ran. Because he was not just, he was not referring to dead body in that, in their own uh, uh, sense of uh, thinking. But he was referring to himself as a dead man in Christ. I am dead to all these things you are talking about. So it is only there you can live. In the spirit. That is only when it will be said concerning you that you are living in the spirit. You are living in the spirit. It's not legalistic. It's not by force. It's not by duress. But willingly 
you know, he surrendered himself. To, and then you see him. That, that way you see those people in the church. You don't have problem. When they are in the church, people that are living in the spirit, when they are in the church, when the gift of the spirit is manifesting through them, you will know that this one that are manifesting the gift of the Holy Spirit, they are real children of God. They are living a crucified life. Indeed. They are not just like that. They are led by the spirit. And as much, as many people as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons and daughters of God. Today, we have many that parading themselves as one thing or the other, claiming to have this gift, that gift. Now, I am not moved by anybody's gift. I've gotten to that level that I am no longer moved by whatever gift anybody claimed to have. I've been in the ministry for quite some time, and I've seen a lot. I have seen Things that I cannot be mentioning here because of uh, some babies that are here. No. I say, really, one church. No, 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 I won't say that. But many of you know some of those things that Papa more than I do. That you see some ugly things happening among Christians. Even, even among those who claim to be having some super gifts. The man, after conducting a powerful so-called revival that night. Shall I sing one of the songs he, he sang that night? Moti retire, oh. Ninu ebe alagbere, oh. E mimi mo lo va wa soro mi. Mo dele jesu mo sori. I will interpret that. But after retirement that he sang, that same night, some few minutes after the closing, he was only a brother. In the room where we put him down, one somewhere up there, there was no light. They put off the gener generator. And then, a lady that lives in the compound there, he invited the lady to come. And then, wanted to just, uh, eh, you understand, baptize the lady. He wanted to baptize the lady. Okay, retired but not tired. The lady just ran to me. Daddy, 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 daddy. Daddy, 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 daddy. I said, what's happening? And that girl, at that time, he was Kogadu. Only daddy, I'm a baby Ogadu. I'm a baby Ogadu. My girlfriend is here. Please, please. Just told your Lord. This is <laughs> Let us stand up. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to be a woman or a man walking and flowing in the spirit? Then you need to be born of the spirit, one. You need to be baptized in the spirit. And then you need to continue to be filled in the spirit. Now, it will then become easy for you to flow easily, comfortably, without being coerced, without being forced to walk in the spirit. All you need is Lord. Help me. Release yourself into my life. Release yourself into my life. Give me the life of yours so that I can, I can live for you and live in you. Lord, help me so that I can live for you and live in you. Open your mouth and begin to pray unto the Lord. I want to live in you and live for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Fill me, Holy Ghost.
With all your power, fill me, Holy Ghost. With all. Father, in the name of Jesus, you can 